Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. And this should be episode, I don't know, 208, 209. Uh, I have been really, really bad for the last few weeks. I haven't recorded anything. Uh, but I do, but no, I, I just recorded one, uh, which, which will come out after this one. Uh, so so, so uh, uh, we do have one more at least. Uh, but today with me, I have uh, my very good, good friend, uh, Amy Wanninger, uh, co founder, well, no, not co founder, founder and CEO of Lead at Any Level and prolific author. Uh, I can't even keep count anymore of how much you've written at this point and how you just produce so much content. It's, it's really incredible. Uh, a- Amy, thank you for joining me today. How, how are you doing? Thank you. I am so glad to see you and to talk to you. You know, we were talking in the pre show about how hard it's been. Um, for those of us who, you know, we're used to kind of seeing each other out on the, you know, on the speaking circuit in the insurance industry. And, you know, Tony, you and I spent a lot of time together in 2019. Uh, yeah, so, we, so. You know, we kept ending up in the same cities at the same conferences <laughs> and having dinner. I think I had dinner more with Tony last year than I did my own husband. And, uh, <laughs> so, so basically, we, we, we see each other at the very least at the CPCU leadership in, in, in spring and at the CPCU annual in fall. And then last year, like that's every year. And then last year we ended up speaking together at several things. Yes. Uh, Several conferences and several chapter I days and that sort of thing. So mm, yeah, it was, it was funny. I'd get off the plane in North Carolina and there you'd be or (laughs) show up in, you know, wherever. So yeah. So it was, uh, it was really good seeing you a lot last year and this year we haven't seen each other so much. So very excited (laughs) to, to have a conversation with you again after several months of not. And, and we're, we're recording September 24th, right around what should be CPCU conference time, right? Like for the last few days, I, I've been, Facebook has been reminding me of Hawaii for years ago, was exactly this week. Uh, it's, it's so, it's so hard for, for those of us who are, or that's their usual lifestyle. Now, a- Amy ha- has, and those of you watching this on, on video, uh, she has adapted a lot better than I have to, to, to quarantine. I, I, uh, I, I haven't cut my hair since March, so it is completely and thoroughly out of control. Uh, while Amy looks really put together and uh, your setup, I was commenting on earlier, just looks beautiful. Like you've got a really professional looking setup. Thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of people wonder where my headquarters is because for those who can't see, I have this beautiful um, like corner office with a view of some city behind me. I think it might, I don't know. Is that New York? I have no idea. Some beautiful no cityscape behind me, right? It's, it's this big, really nice executive office with these leather chairs. And uh, that's what it looks like is behind me. What's actually behind me is a green screen and six months of a four-year-old's mess from being home with <laughs> A 12-year-old and a four-year-old and a husband and an in-and-out 18-year-old for like six and a half months. So, yeah. So, what's really behind me is a green screen and a huge mess, but the green screen takes care of all of that. And, yeah, it it creates this wonderful facade, but also it's kind of aspirational, right? Like, I can look at this and say, someday, that's going to be my office or at least something similar. I think that that the tell is the skyline. Uh, so if, if somebody looks you up on LinkedIn, right, Indianapolis, that, that, is, that, that is a lot of skyline for Indianapolis. <laughs> it is. And it's even more when people say, where are you located? I'm like, Fishers, Indiana. They're like, Fishers is a big city. I'm like, no, Fishers is not a big city. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so. So, so Amy and I go way back with, with TPCU, and, and she is by far my, my favorite uh, author and thinker when, when it comes to, to diversity and inclusion. Uh, and, and she's been on the podcast a couple times, uh, at least a couple times. This once with me, I think once or twice with, with, with Nick before. I'll, I'll, I'll link those episodes in the show notes. Uh, and consulting full time on, on DNI, speaking on DNI full time for the last year and a little bit, I think, right? So nothing yeah, like launching a, 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 your, your own business based around conferences just before the world shuts down. Uh, yeah, yeah. The timing of that did, did seem a little uncomfortable earlier this year, but. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing what happened. It was funny because everything kind of shut down. Things were really starting to pick up for me. Now, as you know, I left my corporate job in April of 2019 and it takes a while, right? You, even with some runway, I still really was trying to build. And around February, early March of 2020, things really started picking up and I could kind of see what this was going to become. And then it all stopped for about two and a half months. And then at the end of May, they all started to come back and it is just, it it is just snowballed this year. 
So it's, it's an exciting thing, right? I've, I've, last year I was, you know, speaking at, you know, very small events and some conferences. Um, this year I've done more corporate work. I've worked with um, companies like Microsoft and PayPal and Delta Fawcett Company. So, I mean, names that you've heard of, which is kind of, Brand names, yeah. kind of nice to put on the whole website. So <laughs> no, no, no kidding. No kidding. So, so basically uh, this time we have you here for a very specific purpose. So I saw you mentioning a, an event uh, a couple days ago. So I clicked on it, looked cool. So I messaged her and, and say, hey, why don't you come on, on, on the podcast and, and, and talk about it? Uh, so so, so what, 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 is, what, what, what is the event? What the heck is Amy doing? Okay, so, and I want to thank you so much for giving me a chance to talk about this. This is exciting for a lot of different reasons. Um, I recently, so most of you know, if you're listening to this, you probably know by now I wrote this book on strategic networking and connecting with people across difference. And, you know, especially during the pandemic, I use Twitter and I use LinkedIn a lot to build my network because where else are you going to go, right? Like <laughs> the front yard is no place to build a network and the backyard is even a little bit worse. And so um, one of my contacts on Twitter, which I think of Twitter as like a crowded bar, right? You kind of meet somebody on Twitter and you can't really like hear them through all the noise or whatever. Um, but then she and I connected on LinkedIn, which I think of more like a coffee shop. And we started chatting and we ended up having like a real conversation. And she said, hey, I'm doing this summit. Do you want to join me? And, you know, me, I'm always, of course, what do you want from me, right? What do you want me to do? But the reason this is so important to me is the focus of this. So Francine Parham is the person who's putting this together. This is her show. It's, you know, something that she's built from the ground up. Prior to COVID, she was doing this as kind of like a national tour where she would go to different cities and have, you know, like a full scale event. Um, but now that, you know, we're all remote, she's doing it online, which I think is a really cool opportunity because now we can network with people from other cities in ways that we could not do as easily or as cheaply as we can now. So, but the focus of this event, what Francine does, she used to be a, um, an executive at some big name companies, like, like blue chip stock kinds of companies. And, you know, she's a black woman who worked her way up into these roles in these really prestigious corporations. And now she coaches other women on how to do the same. And so the summit is called Sharpen Your Skills. It's the, um, I want to make sure I get the name right. It's the Professional Women's Advancement, Advancement Summit. Um, and what she's doing is she's helping women in general and women of color in particular kind of decode what are those unwritten rules? What are the unspoken skills that you really need to get ahead in corporate spaces? And, you know, the reason this is so important to me, I don't know how many people know this about me, but I grew up in a very, very white, rural, blue collar kind of area. And I was first generation from my family to go to college. Well, my mom went, but she went much later in life. So I was in high school when she went to college, but I was kind of a, the first generation traditional student. And I was the first person with like a professional job, quote unquote. So so hold on, I do I do have to point out. So so first person in the family to, to go to college and you got how many degrees? I have two. Just two. <laughs> two, bachelors. Okay. two bachelors. So my mom actually did better than I did though. My mom got uh she has an associate's, a bachelor's, and a master's degree now. Uh she oh, got a master's wow. degree in education. So she's kinda she she outdid me, but that's okay. She deserved it. She worked really hard for that. Um, and she was actually the inspiration for her two sisters to go back to school and get their degrees as well. So, um, but, you know, they did that much later in life. They already had families. It wasn't, you know, they didn't get that kind of like right out of the gate, you know, running mm -hmm. start that I got. And um, so, yeah, so when I entered the work world, I was really lost. Like I didn't know how to craft an email professionally. You know, there were all these things, excuse me, sorry about that, that I didn't no know how to do. Like, turn the ringer off on my phone when I start a podcast. Um, <laughs> and so, and so um, that phone never rings unless I'm recording. But, um, you know, there were just things I didn't understand, right? I didn't know, like, 
after you have a meeting, follow up with an email and, you know, make sure you clarify all of the action items. And, you know, I didn't know what action items were, right? All these things that I didn't know coming out of school. Well, each time you level up in the corporate environment, there's this whole new set of rules. And if you were born so into no, this- They don't hand you a handbook. They <laughs> don't. And it kind of uh, is a problem, right? Like, yeah. It's You're not the easiest thing. It's good stuff to know. And, you know, a lot of people find this out because they watch their parents in the workplace or they watch their parents bring their work home or have conversations on the phone with mm. people they work with or, you know, whatever. Their parents talk to them about how to present themselves. And, you know, mine didn't. Like, their, their ethos was different, right? My dad's philosophy was, you know, they'll work a good horse to death. Don't tell them how smart you are. They'll just abuse you, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, he was really, like, protective of Don't me. Don't tell them how smart you are. Wow, okay. Because, well, he didn't want me to be taken advantage of because that's what would happen in the places where, you know, in his mm -hmm. world, right? Different rules. And so, you know, it was just hard to try to learn all of this, but not just learn it, like, day one after the internship, but also like every new job, every new role, every new level of responsibility. It's like, there's this whole list of things you can't say, and you don't know that until you say it. And then, you know, you're ending up in your boss's office and they're going, what, what were you thinking? I'm like, why was yeah, that I mean, bad? If, <laughs> if you're lucky, if, if you're lucky, you get the feedback, right? If you have, if you have good yeah. leadership, if, if you're unlucky, you just kind of get pushed to the side, right? You get taken out of the list of, of promotable people and you don't even know what happened. Yeah. Not management material, right? Like how many people have we heard that about? And mm. so, you know, and I know that, I mean, you know, there was a long time I was really rough around the edges and in some environments that could probably still be said of me. And <laughs> Tony's laughing at me because he's seen me after a drink at the, <laughs> at the conference. <laughs> but you, the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm laughing is because I, I've always thought you're very, very professional. Oh, well, thank you. Well, it, it has taken a lot of work to get there. And, you know, what's funny is whenever I'm in a professional environment, I'm talking to people, I can tell who was born into it and who has to think about what they're going to say next. Right. Because there's this sort of flow the, the, and seamlessness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The, the, the people that, 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 that were born into it a hundred percent. I, 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 I went to, to, to an elite school an, an elite high school, uh, then I went to, to, to a state school uh, in the States, but, but uh, yeah, like you, you can just tell who, who knows which, which silverware to, to use, yeah. right? The, 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 during, a, during, a, during a meal or, 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 or uh, uh, not only can, can you tell by the behavior, the people that, that grew up with it are comfortable and confident and you can tell that confidence. Yes, yes. And it's, yeah, there's, it, it's just like, there's no hesitation. There's no, you know, looking to the left and right to see what everybody else is doing before you pick up the thing or don't pick up the thing or, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not even like the big gaffes. Sometimes it's just, it's just that little bit of feeling out of place, right? That just costs you a little bit of credibility or, you know, you hesitate and you miss the moment or that kind of thing. And so the whole point of this summit is to help women in general and women of color in particular pick up on these things so that they look more polished, feel more confident, and do all of the things in the background that, let's face it, white men have been doing for generations in the workplace because they've been in these roles for generations. Um, you know, one of the one of the things about this that um, that I think is so interesting is I just lost my thought, Tony, save me, ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I had um, it, I had it and it was gone. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, so this event, uh, is it, is it a yearly event or, or, uh, like how many times has, has, has she, has she done it? Well, she did it several times last year in different cities, but this is the first time okay. she's taking it mm -hmm. completely online. And I, I do agree. You mentioned earlier that the the, the virtual piece, uh, it's it's painful that, that not to be able to to do the normal networking, uh, but uh, the advantage is that makes it much more cost effective, right? Mm -hmm. So so uh, 
right if i'm not mistaken i i think this particular one is about is about 500 bucks just a little uh, under 500 yeah and, and, and but you're uh, not paying for airfare you're not paying for exactly, hotel it, it, you're not paying it, it, for the exactly. drinks <laughs> hey. unless it, unless it was in your in, in your hometown it's hard to to get a conference for right very often the, like the conference itself is something like a thousand bucks and on top of that the flight and yeah. and, and the uh the the uh the, the hotel and the eating you know and, and, and all, all that mm. uh and, and uh you know if if, if you're lucky and, uh, and your employer is will, willing to put the bill that's great but right now we not only have no conferences to go to we also have no budget to do it with in the that's for right. the most part right uh so so i i personally uh 500 bucks falls w w within my I'm willing to invest that in myself. Yeah. Right. Like it's it's hard for me to justify, uh, right. Like the three thousand bucks that a, that a big conference can can cost. Hard to justify that even if I can afford it. Uh, with with, with without employer support, but five hundred yeah. bucks for the right skill set, uh, for a conference that I'm that I'm excited about. I I I think that's that's a very reasonable investment in myself. Yeah. Basically. Absolutely. And what I love about this too is it's not just. It's not just panel discussions. It's not just keynotes um, and workshops. She actually has built one-on-one -on -one coaching into this. She has built small yeah. group coaching into this. She's built networking time into this. She really wants women to get comfortable in this environment and to get the help and, and the support that they need. It, here's the thing. And I, I've heard people say this a lot, and particularly it's first-generation professionals or people who are underrepresented in management. And if this sounds like you, then, then know that this is where you need to be, right? So if, if you've ever said, I just want to do a good job and I want that to be enough, right? Have you heard people say that? Uh -huh. Women especially, absolutely. Women yeah. especially, right? We work our tails off. We work so hard. And when that doesn't work, we work more, right? So if we're given 110% for 40 hours a week and we don't get the promotion, we work 110% for 50 hours a week and then we yeah, don't get the promotion. And so then we up it to 60 and then we're getting divorced because, you know, we never see our families. Right. I mean, like we're killing ourselves to get ahead, but we're doing it yeah. all and, wrong. And, and the performance wise, you, you were probably at the right performance level somewhere between 40 and 60 hours, depending on the company and the industry. And you were missing the softer stuff that nobody told you about. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. And, yeah. And when people say, well, I just want my work to be enough and I don't want to do all that other stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to play the game, right? I don't want to build my network. I don't want to, you know, happen to walk past my boss's boss every time he goes out for coffee. Right. But here's the thing. That's what works. And if it's your amazing skill set and work ethic and nothing else against somebody else's amazing skill set and work ethic and social capital and their dad went to school with your boss's dad and you, you know he they were on the same you know um golf polo team or whatever right yeah. polo team and they were in the same fraternity as the guy who's the vice president and 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 if it's your skills and abilities against all of that you are never going to get that promotion and this is the place to find out what all that is so that you can figure out how to navigate that, despite the fact that you're kind of coming from this, this place of, well, I just, I just keep working harder. Well, it, working harder is not what's going to get you to the next level. And that's what Francine that, really wants people to know. The one-on-one the -on -one coaching piece is, is kind of amazing. I haven't seen that at any other conferences. I, I've seen small group stuff, but, but the one-on-one the -on -one coaching piece, you'd probably be paying 150 to 100 bucks an hour for, oh, for that oh, oh. alone. Hundreds uh, of dollars an hour for some of these coaches. Like I'm, I'm trying to, to to think. Like like I I've hired I've hired a coach once. Uh, uh, I actually recorded a video about that. Uh, trying to 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 uh, to get out to to improve my way out of a performance improvement plan in a job that I wanted to keep. And yeah, it's it's in. In improving myself, part of that was 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 getting diagnosed for ADD, getting getting the ADD medication. Part of that was was the coach. Uh, 
so yeah, it, it, it's it's the one on one coaching it would it would be significantly expensive to 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 get elsewhere. So that that's a fantastic deal. So so t- so tell me ab- about the 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 speakers that that sure. are. Like kind of the quick summary of the, of the speakers, or you can go as deep in detail as you want. No, that's fine. So there are almost, I think, 20 of us between the panels and the workshops and the keynotes. Um, but just a couple that I want to call out. Francine, of course, is amazing with her work history and, you know, places like General Electric and some other names, you know, of that caliber. Um, but Letitia Bird is a woman that I've worked with. You know, I do work with Living Corporate. Um, it's a, a Black-owned media company that focuses on the experiences of black and brown professionals in the workplace. Um, Letitia did a podcast. I think they just wrapped up her show, uh, but she did the link up with Letitia where she talked about, you know, career management strategy. She's a career coach. She is phenomenal. She's a contributing art uh, author for like money magazine. And I mean, she's really like top notch. And um, the other person I'm really excited about because I, we're like Twitter buddies and LinkedIn buddies, but I've never actually met her is Menda Hartz. And Menda Hartz wrote a book called The Memo. And for those of you who aren't familiar with The Memo, it is for black women what Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg was for white women. It's kind of the black woman's answer to Lean In. And uh, Minda has this great line in that book about if I lean in any further, I'll be on the damn floor and <laughs> talking about how hard she had to work as a black woman in the corporate world. And I mean, and that's just, you know, those are just three of, of these amazing women that are going to be presenting. I mean, these are women that have done it, have seen what it takes, have, you know, coached others to get there. And I got to tell you, I am honored to be a part of this. Um, Francine asked me, to join because I wrote a book on strategic networking and, you know, there aren't a lot of folks that have done that. (laughs) And so she said, you know, having a model to think about your network strategically, networking is such a huge component of career advancement and longevity. And so, you know, she wanted to make sure that that was represented and that was something that folks could sink their teeth into um, in this session. So there's going to be a lot of really, really great content. Um, another person I'm really excited about, um, you all don't know her unless you listen to my podcast, see it to be it. Um, but my friend, um, and one of my clients, Vonda Page is going to be speaking about her professional network and what that's done for her in her career. She's going to be part of a panel discussion there. There are a couple of other PayPal executives that are going to be there as well. Awesome. And, and it's a uh, one day, full day online event, basically, right? Like one eight day, hours of content kind of thing. Full day, jam packed. And she's going to record all the sessions. So even though there are concurrent sessions going on, you'll be able to catch the replays of the things that were like maybe like a one and a half priority instead of a top priority. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. So and you and it get is all October, the content. October 15, which is a Thursday. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. So, so, so dear uh, uh, insurance professionals who are looking to grow, uh, especially, especially women of color, but really anybody who who didn't grow up with a silver spoon, <laughs> uh, and any, anybody who 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 didn't grow up with white collar parents the, uh, or even if you did uh, and you know very, very even if you did and, and you don't feel super comfortable uh as you've gotten promotions when it, when it comes to the soft skills yeah. uh this would be a a solid match for for you and basically it's a, a little bit under 500 bucks and a uh uh, one vacation day for, for that Thursday. And you know that you're not using your vacation days this year because you have nowhere to go. <laughs> Cause where are you going to go? And you know, you can, and I would even in, encourage people, you know, talk to your boss and see, do, do you have, do you have money? A lot of times going into fourth quarter, people don't realize this, Tony, but a lot of times going into fourth quarter, managers are sitting on a little bit of money that was in their training budget for the year. And if they don't lo- use it, it's just gone. Right. So if they don't use it by December 31st, they don't get to use it. It doesn't carry over to next year. So now would be a really great time to go to your manager and say, Hey, do we have any money left in our training budget for this year? I would like to do something that would really help me improve 
my polish, my professionalism, and, you know, help me kind of build up the perception of my, my potential, right? But also learn how to make you look really good because the skills that you're going to come out of this with are the skills that people notice, right? It's not the hard work that you do and, you know, suffer in silence at your desk. This is the stuff that people say, oh, you know, I noticed that, you know, I noticed that Jenny was out, you know, um, leading the, you know, the fundraising initiative for the holiday thing, right? Uh, And right, like this is the stuff that people talk about. So you're going to make your boss look good when you take these skills back to the workplace, but also they're probably sitting on some money this year that they haven't spent. And so that's good to know, right? Because a lot of people don't realize that. It, and I, I, I so, so that that's a great way to sell it. And and I've never been a manager, so I didn't I I didn't think about the fact that 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 they would lose it at the end of the year. And this year they probably had, right it probably got budgeted because we expected a normal year that they didn't get used because all the conference is canceled. And if 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 you haven't had the good luck of of being uh, in a, in a role that gets you a, a conference a year or something or something like that. Uh, I've been very, very lucky uh, be, because I get a lot of them for free because I'm speaking or on the other hand, uh, because I'm in sales, like I, I'm there to network with the client. So I get to go to a lot more conferences than, than an operational person. Uh, but, but basically 500 bucks is nothing. Uh, so so I get, one thing I can guarantee, whether, whether they have the budget or not, uh, you're not going to offend your boss by, by asking for 500 bucks for an educational thing, uh, especially if you sell it as, as well as, as Amy sold it because that that is especially with no travel uh but even if travel was involved 500 bucks for the actual conference is cheap for, yeah. for a professional conference uh so so it's it's definitely on the cheaper end Absolutely. Uh, they can usually run 800 to 1200 is fairly common uh at least within the world that mm-hmm. i live in, in insurance uh and even so, you know so, a lot of self-paced online classes are more than this conference will be and you're you you do not get the benefit of interaction you don't get the networking and or the, networking. the one-on-one coaching yeah. Yeah. Uh, any uh that that, that is that, that that is fantastic i i i don't think we can sell it any better i, I think that you could <laughs> mic drop uh especially ha- having added the, the piece about how to sell it to your boss i'll make sure to, right. to include in the show notes that, that we even talk about how to sell it to your boss there you go uh, so i want to make it i want to make it really easy for people to find this Mm-hmm. So okay. if you go to invitationfromamy.com, let me say that again, invitationfromamy.com, that will send you right into the registration page so you can see exactly you know, what you're getting, what's going to happen on October 15th, who's going to be there, all of that. You click on digital pass and sign right up. And again, that's invitationfromamy.com. It, it, it was wise to not include your last name in, in the domain name. Nobody uh, can spell my name. <laughs> uh, very, very wise. Uh, I can pronounce it, but a lot of people can't. Uh, <laughs> uh, Amy wanting her, I think you'll be wanting her to speak again. I love that you remember that. <laughs> I use that every single time and it works. People remember it. You, 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 you are... You're really, you're really, really good at at, at the uh, at, at the at the memorable lines. Like, oh, thank you. Like, like I, I, I never forget that one. I, I never forget the the uh, your heart can't be in the right place if your fear if your if your feet aren't moving. Uh, and there, there's 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 a few others if right that, that I can't think of right now, but that that I definitely Amy isms that 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 uh, I've always thought were were really 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 brilliant. Uh, thank you. So uh, thank you for joining me today. And thank you everybody for, for, for joining today. Sorry uh, that, that I've been uh, bad about recording podcasts for the last few weeks. Uh, maybe we'll get a little more. <laughs> uh, but I, I pa- pa- partially it's, it, it's, it's COVID, uh, right? I don't feel like doing anything. Partially, it's also like I'm not going to record one just to record one, right? I, 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 want, right, I want to record interesting ones. Uh, so, so, so I was very excited to, to do this one because you're always a lot of, of, of fun to chat with. Thank um, you. And, and, and we should be hanging out at, at CBCU like, like this week, right? And it's not happening. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, uh, and we need to have a couple of more yeah. of these conversations because there's some other things that I want to make sure uh, that the Profiles and Risk audience knows about that are coming. Um, not events necessarily, but opportunities that, um, you know, ways to get involved in 
in some bigger projects and get some exposure for your personal brand. Because one of the things that you're going to learn at Francine Summit is your personal brand matters. And, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting the right exposure and positioning yourself well within your company and outside your company all the time. Fantastic. Our, our whole purpose is providing the, uh, helping insurance people find, find the right resources. Uh, and and uh, my, 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 uh, my predecessor host uh, was very focused on, on insure tech. I, I'm not. I'm really focused on, on insurance and careers. Uh, so, so, uh, I love this type of content. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to interview the, the next insured tech CEO. There's only 1700 more of them to go. Uh, but, but uh, <laughs> that's so one I'm a week for the next 400 years. You're good. <laughs> exactly. But, but, but I don't get super excited for those. I get super excited for, for the, for the career ones. Uh, so, so, so I, I, that's where we're here for to help people grow within insurance. Uh, and this is just the kind of thing. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, whenever you have events like this, like literally just just grab time in the scheduling system and let's record about it. You're always welcome to the show. Thank and, you so and much, I'm Tony. Sa- and, and, and I'm, I'm saying that live. Uh, <laughs> <for> recording. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so I'm, I'm I can hold you to it. Pieces. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so thank you very much for, for, for joining today. Uh, and uh, we had some technical difficulties earlier. So, so I am actually not sure how to stop recording. I'm looking for, for the, uh, <laughs> So Do you have somebody editing this at the end, or are they going to have to listen to all of this? Oh, so I do my own stunts. I do my own editing, and, and I do very <laughs> minor editing. I, I caught, like, at the very beginning. If, Sorry, people. <laughs> if there's, like, silence. Uh, if, you, if you listen to my stuff, you're used to listening to my, to my rambling. Uh, so, so, yeah, there, there's no editing. There. That's way too professional. Uh, uh, Nick used to do a significant amount of editing. I, I really don't. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, the, uh, I will include the link. Uh, in, in, invitation invitation from, Amy. from Amy. Uh, right, invitationfromamy.com. Mm-hmm. Invitationfromamy.com. I'll include that link. I will also include the, 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 the link to Amy's LinkedIn and to Lead at Any Level and to the other episodes she's been on. Uh, her stuff is really fantastic. So, so if, if you were not familiar with it before, check it out. 